up, beautiful ladies and handsome men. I am not sure what's true or false in this story. I take gossip, tea, rumor, and scandal from yesteryear, from online, from word of mouth, from books, and I ball it up and I tell you guys a story. Mm -mm, you smelling good and looking even better. Thank you. I got the face from my parents and the smell from Scentbird. Scentbird? What kind of perfume is that? Boy, you it's crazy. Scentbird is a monthly perfume subscription service where you can choose from over 600 different designer fragrances. Let me tell you what I ordered this month. I'll be I right got back. the uh uh. Do you want the number or not? Yeah, I guess. All right then, listen to what I ordered. First, I got me some X Nihilo Fleur Narcotique. It starts off floral, but then it turns into like fresh, clean clothes on a spring day. The next one is L'Occitane in Provence by Vervain. It's very lemony, very limey, and very sexy. And the very last one is Soleil Vibrant by Lalique. And this is the one you're gonna wear for your nightlife. It's very spicy, but not overdone. And look at their new containers. You can just open them up and take the perfume out of them and do a mix and match. Then look at all the perfume they put in the bottle. My stuff always lasts over 30 days. And you know what? Since you've been being so nice, I'm gonna give you the same discount that I'm gonna give my Yeah, but audience. what about the number? Click the link in the description and use my code to get 55% off of your first month of Scentbird. That is $8 for your first month. Yeah. What it do, Scandalites and Says So Squad? This is Ashley with Ashley Says So, and I am back with another Old Hollywood Scandals video. And baby, this video is gonna be kind of a mashup. It's gonna have a little bit on uh, Melba Moore, Clifton Davis. But anyways, let's get to the mess. Both Melba Moore and Clifton Davis were born in the year 1945, with Melba being born on October the 29th in New York, and Clifton Davis being born on October the 4th in Chicago. To speak more on Melba, her mother was a beautiful lady by the name of Gertrude Melba Smith, who actually was a professional singer who went by the name Bonnie Davis. Now, since Bonnie was always on the road, constantly trying to make money for her family, a uh, little Melba was actually left in the care of a nanny most of the time. Child, these folks is out here saying that that nanny was busting Melba's back in. She definitely did not shy away from disciplining uh, Melba. It's even said that later on in life, Melba sometimes questioned if her discipline kind of bordered on the line of abuse. But there's one type of abuse that Melba didn't have any question about because gossip claims that every once in a while she would have two uncles who would stop by the house and allegedly they would do inappropriate things with her. And I honestly don't know just to what degree those inappropriate things were, but whatever they were, it was said to have bothered Melba for a long time. Now to move on, even though Melba Moore's mother was a professional singer, her childhood was not filled with music like a lot of people on this list. In all actuality, her mother was gone most of the time like I already stated, and then some gossip claims that even when her mother was home, uh, I think she kind of wanted to deter her daughter from going down the same path she went on. But if this was the case, Gertrude failed in her mission because soon she ended up marrying a musician who became Melba's stepfather. And this guy kept music going in the house. And of course, he was always playing his instrument. So I think it was around 10 years old that Melba discovered that she could sing. And not only that, she discovered that she enjoyed singing and she could do it very well. But it still seems that her mother and probably others in the family were uh, telling her that no, you don't need to do that. You need to get a steady job. You need to go to college, get your degree, and you know, get something stable and steady. Don't get mixed up into show business. So Melba, being a mindful child, did just that. She finished high school and then she went to college and she actually got a degree. Soon after that, she started teaching, but even while she was teaching, she was feeling like her life was unfulfilled. There were so many what ifs and what abouts flowing through her mind all the time that she just could not get the music industry and singing out of her bones. Melba stuck with her teaching though and she pushed through until one day she brought a record to class. Whatever the record was was one of the hot songs of the day and all of the children in the classroom started giggling, dancing, singing, cutting up and Melba loved what she saw. She wanted to bring this feeling to other people and so that's when Melba Moore ended up quitting her teacher's job to pursue her music career. Now, if the story is to be believed, the stars lined up for uh, Melba Moore right from the start because Gossip claims as soon as she quit her job, she ended up meeting Valerie Simpson. And I'm not exactly sure just how Valerie helped her and that's just because I'm pretty ignorant to the uh, business side of the music industry. But I do know that by 1967, Melba Moore found herself recording her first song. Now, this song did not get released until the 1980s, but that was okay because 
assumed there was something else that was going to take over Melba Moore's life. Rumor has it while she was in the studio recording, some young hippie man came walking into the studio and asked Melba straight out, hey, do you want to be in my stage play? And Melba is like, what stage play? And the guy is like, it's called hair. And at first Melba was like, mm, I don't know, that sounded a little stupid right there. But eventually the guy ended up winning her over and Melba took her little bitty teeny tiny self on stage and she shined baby. Her light was so bright that in a short period of time she went from playing a side character to overtaking the lead character role. That lead role was played by Diane Keaton at first. So yeah, Melba definitely proved herself as worthy and she didn't really have many public eyes on her at first, but she had a lot of eyes on her that mattered. Those who casted Broadway plays, they had a little taste of Melba Moore and now they wanted to see her do much more. And one of those productions that was much more was a play called Pearly. Melba was cast as a character named Ludie Bell and she brought Ludie Bell to life. Um, it was clear that every time Melba stepped on the stage, all all eyes were on her. And this time, it was the public's eyes. In fact, everybody wanted to know more about her. Melba had made such a splash that when it came time for the Tony Awards, she won a Tony Award that year. And that year was 1970. And at this time, big things started happening for uh, Melba Moore, just like it did for Nell Carter when she won her Tony Award. Suddenly, Melba was offered movie roles. She started to be offered all type of uh, record deals. But baby, Melba Moore could have been offered a million dollars with a smile on top. There was only one thing that she wanted more than anything at this time, and that was an actor by the name of Clifton Davis. By the time 1970 hit, when she had actually won that Tony Award, she and Clifton at that point had been talking at least a year and a half. And not only that, the people say that they were living together at this point as well. The relationship was said to have had some messy pressure in it, honey, because Melba Moore was a bigger star than Clifton Davis at this time. So gossip claims that she may have felt a little pressure to bring her man up to the status of where she was. By 1971, there were said to be talks of giving Melba Moore her own variety show. Melba may have put a bug or two in somebody's ear because uh, by the time 1972 came around, it was called the Melba Moore and Clifton Davis variety show. And not only that, it was picked up and put on the air from the very first episode. They were just oh so cute and oh so fun. You know, people enjoyed watching these beautiful people together. They loved seeing Melba and Clifton together. There was a hope all around that they may even get married and have children and have this very happy life. But that was definitely not in store for this couple. Cha! Clifton and Melba had all kind of mess going on behind the scenes. Rumor says that by the time they got their show together that they had been having problems for a while. And these problems problems were said to have stemmed from Clifton Davis. Baby said that Clifton knew how to play a woman for a doggone fool. So when he and Melba first got together, he played it smooth for, I don't know, maybe a couple of months, maybe six months before he started going out and cheating on her and just, you know, acting foolish. He was also said to be a partier who liked the nightlife. All of this partying and nightlife, of course, leads to other things. So soon, gossip claims that Clifton Davis was hooked on cocaine. And I'm guessing Melba wanted to keep up with or remain cool and fun for her guy. So allegedly she also started dibbling and dabbling in cocaine. And this made for a hot mess because they were young, they were living fast, and they also had to work like 12 hours a day, sometimes 18 hours a day. So their relationship became a pressure cooker. And soon these people were having extreme arguments and sometimes gossip claims knock out, drag down fight. And Melba really started to feel pressure, baby, because the folks say that Clifton not only was spending his money, he he started to spend her money, a lot of it. And honey, everything I just explained was said to have happened before they got their show. So you can imagine how horrible it was when they got their show, everything became 10 times worse. For one, Clifton Davis had that pretty face all over TV now. So you talking about some doggone hoes, baby, it was groupie galore. And not only that, Clifton Davis was said to be getting mean by this point, because see, now he was fostering in his own career. He was getting his own popularity. So allegedly he would talk to her like she was nothing, go and uh, snort all his drugs and do all of this partying and having wild sex with other women, renting rooms and expecting uh, Melba to pay for all of it. And gossip claims that he also embarrassed Melba more even more when she found out that she was not his only main chick. He was out and about with
with uh, jazz singer Nancy Wilson just as much. So really the whole thing was one big hot mess. And I believe uh, him with Nancy Wilson led to Melba and Clifton splitting up soon before or after the ending of the first season of their show. Well, this was a terrible thing. Show business, especially when you come down to television, works on what the audience wants. And if the audience has fallen in love with the chemistry of Clifton Davis and Melba Moore together, then there's a question of if that same audience is going to accept either of them on their own. And the studios were just simply not willing to take that chance. And there's also rumors out here that claim that Melba and Clifton offered to the studios that they could still do the show together. You know, they could just fake it. And if this is true that they offered this, I guess the studios just felt like, no, you know, we're not gonna risk it. And so she and Clifton were fired. So now that Melba and Clifton were broken up, fired from the show, gossip claims that Melba went into a depression. And there was a multitude of reasons why Rumor has it that one of the reasons is because not too long ago or around this time period, she ended up having an abortion of a baby that she had with Clifton. And the abortion itself was traumatic, but gossip claims that she ended up having a procedure right after that where a tube was inserted into her uh, uterus and it ruptured her appendix. And this almost killed Melba. So she was sick and down and out for a while. And while she was down and out and sick, she also lost all of her money at this time. A lot of these so-called managers or agents or whoever was working with her, um, they stole her money. Melba found herself truly alone in this world and ending up with nothing, so much so that she ended up moving back home with her parents. Another reason why Melba was depressed is because while it seemed like her life was going boo-boo, Clifton's life was going good, baby. First, the man won his first Tony Award for a show called Two Gentlemen of Verona. Then he had a movie lined up called Together for a Day. There was also a a show he was appearing on called Love American Style. And then he had several episodic appearances in a variety of things. So it really seemed like Clifton had kissed the Melba show goodbye and was walking into greatness while Melba Tell ain't had nothing lined up. Then child of folks say things quickly started creeping off track. Baby say first of all Clifton started getting full of himself honey especially when he bagged the show That's My Mama. And so he started acting out like some stars do. What can you do for me? I don't need nobody in my life unless they doing something for me. I'm Clifton Davis. Honey, by his own admission, Clifton Davis became a people user, especially when it came to the women. You see, Clifton knew what he looked like, and he also knew that some women would fall all over themselves just to get with him. He had absolutely no qualms about taking a woman's last and watching her do her last just to keep him, and then just walking out of the door. And like I said, he was a people user. So not only did he use women, he used men. Men that probably didn't have high self-esteem or think that that they themselves were that handsome would want to hang out with him. And so Clifton wouldn't need to use his money for stuff because, hey, bruh, you got me? Yeah, I got you, man. I got you. And not only did uh, Clifton deal with those type of men, he surrounded himself with yes men. Amongst all of this stuff that I already mentioned, his drug problem got way worse. Suddenly, he would be too high to go to auditions. Then he started BSing with a lot of the gigs he already had, being late or once again, just never showing up to the set. While he was shooting that that's my mama. Clifton was making around $250,000 a year. So he had bought him a nice home in the Hollywood Hills. Probably about a year later, the house was gone. Clifton had used all of that money from the sale of the house on drugs. And by the time the 1980s came around, he was living in this teeny weeny bitty apartment where he would drink himself to sleep each night or drug himself to sleep each night. Still, even at this point though, gossip claims that Clifton Davis kept a woman. And the woman that was supposedly with him at this time was a woman by the name of Ann Taylor. And this woman's love for Clifton ran so deep that when he started busting her upside the head, she would not go anywhere. As a matter of fact, Clifton had to sit her down and tell her, hey, you need to leave me because I'm busting you upside the head and apparently I'm not gonna stop busting you upside the head, so you need to leave. He finally was able to talk her into leaving him, but even when she left, she would call him constantly every day, just wanting to be attached to him and also wanting to check up on him. Once Clifton became completely alone with nobody left to monitor him, he did what he did best, the drug. It got to a point where people around him were just counting down the days when he would become the next celebrity death story. So 
one day his manager, possibly the only manager and only friend he had left, started calling Clifton's house. He wouldn't answer the phone. Manager kept calling all throughout the day. No answer. Finally, the manager showed up at his house, beating on the door. Clifton, let me in, let me in. She became so frightened that she kicked in the door and saw Clifton on the ground unconscious. His manager rushes to his side, lifts up his head, and she's like, you know, Clifton, wake up. Don't die on me, wake up, Clifton. And baby, y'all know I got to act this out because y'all wouldn't believe what happened next. Oh my gosh, Clifton, please wake up. Clifton, please fight, Clifton, fight. I'm up, B. Now, Ooh. what the F is you doing here? Didn't I tell you to stay out of my mother effing business, B? What the F is you doing here sitting up here holding me in this? Get the F out of my apartment. Babe, I know that woman was scrambling, picking up her purse and everything, trying to get out that doggone house. Was upset, baby, that she was there checking on him, worried about him. But here's the craziest part about this whole situation. Allegedly, on that same night that this happened, Clifton ended up getting a call from a family member and this family member just kind of broke down on the phone and was like, Clifton, the whole family is worried about you. So that night he was said to call out to God, asking God, begging God to change him. And God may have healed him from drugs, but honey, according to this uh, person that I would just call W, Clifton wasn't nowhere near healed from uh, treating folks like they were a dog. Because this W person said that in the early 1990s, he was working in a city called Studio City at a hardware store. Said that Clifton came in there mad about something and called this guy everything up under the sun. As a matter of fact, this guy said that it took everything in his power not to pick up a hammer baby and bust Clifton Davis upside his head. So I don't know, maybe because Clifton Davis had gotten himself on another prominent TV show which was a man, he started back acting, you know, this certain way. I don't know. I do know today though, it's claimed that, you know, he is either in church or maybe even a part of the ministry and he is doing well. Now that's what happened to Clifton after his breakup with Melba Moore. Melba's story uh, is possibly in some people's eyes worse than that. I've already told you that after the Melba Moore and Clifton Davis variety show, uh, Melba Moore just kind of went downhill. Well, in the year 1974, two years after that show had ended, a uh, rumor has it that she met a very charming man by the name of Charles Huggins, who was said to be an astute uh, businessman as well as a promoter. Apparently, Charles presented himself as a person who would take all of Melba's troubles and cares away. He also promised her that he would get her career back on track and Melba fell in love with this. She fell in love with him. And so by the year 1976, they were married. She trusted Charles with everything. And so when it came to him working to stabilize her career, of course he needed any little bit of money that was left over, if any, from her uh, former career. And Melba was happy to give him that. And from the way it looks from the research, it seems Charles Huggins actually did what he said he was going to do. She was making hit music and she was performing again. She even gave birth to their baby girl and they also formed a production company together called Hush Production. Under Hush Productions, Melba released music that even got her nominated for a Grammy. And then on top of Melba, Hush, the company itself, was said to have a roster of great entertainers. As the company grew bigger and better, Hush was able to become a parent company to other small companies and one of these companies was called Orpheus Pictures. And Orpheus Pictures supposedly put up the money behind a number of films and one of these films was called Death by Temptation. And word on the messy old Hollywood streets say that Death by Temptation caused the death of Melba's marriage. Posts on the online gossip blogs say that allegedly a beautiful young actress who starred in this movie, Michael Michelle, actually caught Charles's eye. Again, that is something you may want to take with a grain of salt because that did come from a gossip blog and somebody posted that up there, but that is on these Hollywood streets. Whatever the case, as soon as Death by Temptation was released, Melba's marriage was over, but she did not know it yet. And this is where things get really scandalous and really messy, and this also is where I have to watch it, honey, because uh, gossip claims that Charles will definitely sue you, for real. So you about to hear me say allegedly 50 million times and that all of this information was found online from uh, news articles, gossip sites, magazines, books, everywhere, child. But woo, here we go. Allegedly, 
One day in either 1991 or 1992, Melba Moore was walking to the mailbox with her daughter. She opens the mailbox, pulls out a letter, opens the letter, and then child starts bucking her eyes all the way out because the words on the letter in her hands say, Final divorce decree. So per this letter in her hand, Charles and Melba were divorced. Per Melba, she had no idea that anything was even wrong in her marriage. They had still been sleeping together, eating together, taking walks. I mean, you know, just doing stuff married couples do. So allegedly, Melba is like, divorcing me and also I didn't sign nothing. Melba is frantic now. You know, she's calling her husband and she's like, you know, what's this? I got a letter saying we're divorced. We're divorced. And she's like, you know, why would you do this? And to this, Charles allegedly responded, mm, that's just the way I am and hung up. Well, immediately Melba wanted to show that this is just the way she was. First thing she did was try to declare the divorce decree uh, invalid. And not only that, Melba was charging that the whole thing was fraudulent anyway because she had not signed anything. And so she believed that either Charles had forged her signature or gotten one of his employees to do so. Since Melba had pretty much let Charles handle all of the business in their relationship, she didn't really know where to turn. And so she did what she thought was the best move and she turned to the media. This is when she went to the Daily News and she poured out this story of how she was being surprised with a divorce that she didn't want or agree to. She gave details and started making claims that the reason Charles had done this to her was because allegedly Charles was trying to embezzle funds from her. When asked what funds, this is when Melba basically told the reporter about Hush Productions. She said that she and her husband had started this company together. And then she added on that right before Charles filed for the divorce, allegedly he had somehow moved all of her funds out of her name and into his name. Everything that dealt with the business. Also, allegedly he had bought properties in her name. Basically, the point that she was trying to get across is that Charles allegedly had ruined her financially and only left her with about 15 hundred dollars to her name. According to the Daily News article, uh, Melba also alleged that Charles had been abusive to her, not only her, but to their daughter. She said that he had constantly accused her of being a lesbian. And not only that, he constantly accused her of teaching their daughter how to be a lesbian. She added that she was just homeless and her life was completely in shambles. And honey, she told much more than that. Well, when her ex-husband or husband, whatever you want to call him, Charles saw this paper, hit the market, baby, he was none too pleased. And he immediately started the process to sue Melba as well as the Daily News for a slander and libel. Now on top of Charles starting this lawsuit, he and Melba also had to go to court regarding their divorce. And at this court case, Charles's lawyers complained that, you know, Melba is out here slandering Charles, making him seem like a bad man. So Charles's lawyers asked the judge to basically tell Melba to shut up. The judge agreed and tells Melba that you need to hush your mouth about the divorce to the public. Don't do no more interviews, sit your tail down somewhere. Baby, them folks say the next thing that anybody knew, Melba was at the doggone Apollo Theater basically giving a speech about what had happened to her. Gossip claims that not only was Melba at the Apollo, baby says she was at the welfare office signing up for welfare and had news cameras there, child. Which I couldn't find this particular footage, so I don't know if that part is true or not, but she did go down to the welfare office to sign up. She told people about it because allegedly Melba even did another interview. And this time she also was alleging that her husband had told people, both uh, regular people and people in the music industry, that she was on drugs. But see, you got some messy rumors and gossip on the streets that say that Melba was actually on drugs. And I will tell you why a lot of people believe this rumor in just a minute. But anyways, it seemed the reason that Melba was speaking out about this is because she was desperate for help and she was desperate for people to hear her story. Even though Melba was desperate to get her story out, the judge in the divorce case had told her behind to shut her mouth. He found out that she did not obey, so allegedly he sentenced her behind to 
to 30 days in jail. And eventually, maybe even soon after the 30 days in jail, things were settled with their divorce, but the uh, slander libel case was still going on. And from my research, it seems like in this case, Melba stuck beside every word that she had said. However, Charles could afford good lawyers, and so his lawyers did pick apart some of Melba's uh, testimony or some of her claims. One of the main things he picked apart was Melba's claim that she had monetary assets in the Hush Production Company. Baby, Charles's lawyer determined this was a lie and used Melba's own words against her. Because apparently at an earlier date, Eddie Murphy had taken Hush Productions to court for some reason. I don't know exactly what for. During the Eddie Murphy case, Melba had a deposition and during that deposition, she said that she didn't hold any type of monetary value or, you know, assets inside of the company. And I'm guessing a deposition means she said this in court. So when she said this in court, this was a sworn testimony. Either Melba lied in the Eddie Murphy case about holding assets in the company, or either she was lying now about having uh, money and assets in the company. There were other things that Charles's lawyer picked apart too. I can't read everything out to you like piece by piece, but if you want to go read the case files yourself, I will put a link in the description so you can go read the full case file there. But I can say as far as this story and for Melba, life was just not done dumping on Melba. Because she and Charles were like this and their relationship had gotten so bad, it ruined the relationship with her daughter. Not only that, because Melba was all the time claiming that she had no money, allegedly some judge removed her daughter from her care and gave full custody to Charles. And so poor Melba by this point has no money, no daughter, no husband, uh, you know, no nothing. So Melba knew she had to get herself together and that's what she started to do. It was possibly to toward the mid to late 90s that Melba Moore started to slowly pull herself back up. She focused on her faith and got into church deeply. Once she got into church, she also started using church as a vehicle to where she could perform and tell her testimony. Little by little, her career was starting to take shape again. Melba even booked some uh, stage plays. In 2003, she had worked on herself so much that she got a role in the movie Fighting Temptations. By the year 2005, it was certainly clear that Melba Moore was in a better headspace and that she had cleaned up everything in her life. And I say that because in the year 2005, Melba Moore showed up at a drug rehab and told her story about how she had went to jail, been hooked on drugs, and now she had made it through. And this is why I say most people believe the rumor that uh, Melba Moore did do drugs. Because how can you go to a rehab and try to help people get over their serious addiction if you did not do drugs yourself? As far as the libel slander case, I do know that eventually it was thrown out of the first court that it was brought to. But I think Charles took it back to court in another court, maybe even a lower court, I'm not sure. But I don't know exactly how that ended. In 2007, she landed a role in the production Ain't Misbehaving. By this time, Gossip claimed that she and her daughter had reconnected. And since then, Melba has continued to survive and move forward. And she's even pretty much fully forgiven her ex-husband, Charles Huggins, for whatever he did. Speaking of Charles Huggins, in 2015, his tail was somewhere looking skippy headed and looking crazy because he was facing some doggone charges. Child Charles had been telling folks to invest their money with him. Talking about he had some connections in Sierra Leone for diamonds and gold. Charles ain't knew nobody digging nowhere but a hole in his doggone backyard. The investigators found out that man was pocketing all them doggone folks investment money. And baby, you should have seen how Charles's lawyers were describing him when they were in court. Baby, these folks was worse than uh, Ron Osley's lawyers. Y'all remember when Ron Osley's lawyers was talking about he was sick and close to death? Charles's lawyers came up in there saying that not only was this man sick, baby, they were saying that the man couldn't even read or write. To use the exact words, these folks said that Charles was a functional illiterate. How this man own a successful uh, multi million dollar company, but he can't even barely write nothing but his name. Now, baby, they know they was wrong and took it too far. Still, though, Charles Huggins felt like he wouldn't have to serve much time because he had an ace up his sleeve. And that ace was a video of Melba Moore shown to the courtroom 
who was uh, begging for Charles to get a second chance. She felt like he really deserved one. You know, she didn't want to see him die in prison. This is when the rumor boards got to jumping off where people started questioning whether uh, Melba was telling the full truth back in the day when she said that Charles did all of those things to her. I'm not sure if she was or not, but the thing is, is that she could have been telling the truth. Some people just really do have the power of forgiveness. It is that strong. And Melba's power of forgiveness allegedly is that strong because gossip claims that even in 2022 Charles Huggins helped her with her new album which was called Imagine. So baby I don't know but y'all already know what time I'm on. Leave your comments so I can read the way you feel and see your opinion. But this is the end of the old Hollywood scandalous tale with Melba Moore and Clifton Davis. If you enjoyed this video click the like button. Even if you didn't like this video click the like button. Also uh, go ahead and subscribe. Like I said y'all always here. Go on click the subscribe button. I love you guys so much. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.